So today uh, we're going to talk about this week's issue. Okay. <coughs> this is the Illinois gubernatorial issue. You, oh, you want to see, the, see the cover? Yeah. Okay. So that's the cover. We do some kind of an issue every primary or every election. We ask mm -hmm. the the issues that the candidates are behind. We want to know their stances on it in relation to the kinds of things we cover. Poverty, homelessness. Um, because, so we, what we did was we went to some of the nonprofit groups that we regularly contact. We get press releases from them. They tell us about news that they're doing. We looked at everything they had sent us and then we went deeper with them and said, what are the questions you think we ought to ask? And then we researched those again to know so that we understood them. And then we decided what we actually felt were the deepest questions. So we had six questions. I'm going to run through four of them just briefly. There was one about unaccompanied youth. Those are people who are homeless without a parent or guardian. As you know, this could be a matter of sexual identity, but it could also be things like a child was a, sing was a child of a single parent. That parent became involved with someone else, and the step-parent no longer wanted the child around. Or the step-parent abused the child, and the child ran away. Um, so these children sometimes fall between the cracks of the state uh, welfare system. The state um, sick leave was another question. There are now policies within both the city of Chicago and Cook County government that guarantee people 40 hours of sick leave a year. That's basically one week sick leave, five days. That could be enough to keep you employed if you have a sickness. Uh, you could get through it just having four day, five days off. Mm -hmm. And that could keep your job, which means you could stay housed. Um, then there was an, a question about Illinois paid family medical leave. And this is for you or someone in your family. Maybe you have to take care of an elder parent. And that again, it'll preserve your job so that you can stay housed. And then we had another question about asking if they would support legislation that required timely certification for U and T visas for immigrants who are themselves crime victims. These may be people who are trafficked or they're victims of domestic violence, and it's a matter of getting them certified so that they can stay here while perhaps their court case is in action. Because sometimes they are the person who's the witness who can testify against someone who's an offender and offending somebody else. So those were shorter questions. Then we went deeper on a couple of other questions. So the first question was that in 2009, the state's capital budget included $130 million for affordable housing. Now this isn't the day-to-day -day budget. This is the capital budget. In other words, money spent on things that you infrastructure, buildings, roads, etc. So of the $130 million, the Illinois Housing Development Authority used $29.2 million to create 653 units of permanent supportive housing. Permanent supportive housing could be someone who's overcoming an addiction, but it could also be someone with a disability. And in fact, I say here that Illinois is still the subject to multiple three consent decrees. These consent decrees had to do with placing people in nursing homes rather than less restrictive housing. These would be people with a developmental disability, an intellectual disability, or mental illness. If they're in nursing homes, their freedom to move around and have a good life is more restricted than if they were in housing in the community. Because we have not been in compliance, we've lost out on federal funding. So I asked a flat out question, would you support this line item? Uh, because obviously if these people could get out of substandard housing and into good housing, we could move other people into wherever they are. Then the second question we went into detail on was the Illinois Homeless Prevention Program provides emergency assistance. As you may know, there's an, a 31, if you call the 311 number and you're in danger of being homeless, but you have a job, say you have an emergency expenditure, you have a health bill, a, hosp, uh, a car bill, and it throws you off, and you can't pay your rent, it's cheaper to keep you housed than to have you evicted and have to rehouse you. So, uh, as they say here, it's the average assistance is $3,000 to $4,000, and it could go towards rent security deposit or utility bills. So, in the 20 years that this was in existence in Illinois, it had an 85% success rate in keeping people housed. However, for the 18 months when we went without a budget, that's when it was in trouble. So we asked whether they would support a return to full funding for the homelessness prevention. In other words, $11 million instead of $4 million. 
Right. So it sounds like uh, we rounded out all six of our questions mm -hmm. with a, a lot of the issues that touch our vendors, That's our right. vendors' families, um, and put prospective vendors, and then also the, the immigrant community because we're part of this international network. So, um, even Even low-income people in Chicago because the thresholds are getting higher for everybody in Chicago. And with that, there's more people, as we say, living paycheck to paycheck. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, we have a few more, we have a couple minutes left on this segment. Um, do you want to just talk about the, the candidates, the, the candidates who, that okay. are um, included so are gonna, in here? Are we going to flash the pictures as we talk I about them? It might be kind of hard to do that. Okay, so the first candidate is Daniel Biss. He has a, a PhD in mathematics from MIT. He served at the University of Chicago. He has been a state senator and an Illinois House representative. Um, the second, and we did put all the candidates' bios in did. here, whether they responded to the questions or not, That's right. and they're we alphabetical. Did. They are alphabetical. Um, Bob Diber is from Marine, Illinois. That's in southwestern Illinois, near St. Louis. He was the superintendent of schools, and his family owned a farm, the same farm, for more than a hundred years. Tio Hardiman grew up in CHA, the Henry Horner Projects. He has been executive director of Violence Interrupters, and he previously worked with Ceasefire, and he has a master's degree in inner city studies from Northeastern Illinois, East, Northeastern University. Um, Jeannie Ives is a Republican. She represented parts of the western suburbs and Naperville in the Illinois House since 2012 and she has been on the task force on veteran suicide. She previously served on the Wheaton City Council and she went to West Point. Chris Kennedy managed the Merchandise Mart when it became one of the largest LEED certified buildings. He's now working on real estate development, a $1 billion project at Wolf Point. Um, he and his wife run Top Box Foods, which is a hunger relief nonprofit they founded to aid underserved neighbor neighborhoods. He chaired the U of I Board of Trustees and he has an MBA from Northwestern. Um, Dr. Robert Marshall served in the Army in Vietnam and on the Burr Ridge Board of Trustees. He graduated from Oberlin College and Harvard Medical School. He's a radiologist, and he's previously rung for Congress and the Senate. J.B. Pritzker has a bachelor's degree in political science from Duke University and a law degree from Northwestern. He founded the Pritzker Group, which is a venture capital group in Chicago and Illinois focused on healthcare and technology, and he co-founded 1871, the Small Business Incubator. He's also supported the Center on Wrongful Convictions. And Bruce Rahner is the incumbent governor He since 2015. He started out as uh, in an investment firm, and then that firm turned into a venture capital and equity firm, which he stepped down from chairing when he um, became ran for governor. Became governor for okay. a couple of years ago. Yes. All right. Well, thank you. Um, we're kind of out of time for this segment. We want to remind people: um, oh. get up and close and personal to vote. Um, in this week's edition, a reminder that you're watching Streetwise Live on Can TV Channel 21. And um, now <coughs> we're going to have Alan come to the table with our guest Ebony. Take it away. Yes, I'm hey, Alan. I'm with Streetwise, and I'd like to uh, welcome our guest Ebony Debris. Ebony, uh, <clears throat> can you please let people know who you are with and how, how long you've been there? Hi, I'm uh, Ebony D. Berry. I'm with One North Side. We're community organizers on the north side of Chicago. Um, I joined One North Side as a leader volunteer around 2012 and have been employed by them since 2014. Okay, thank you, thank you. Uh, what kind of work do you actually do? So, um, as community organizers, we listen to um, community members about the issues they're facing. We have monthly meetings and we work to advance um, community concerns. So some of the work we do right now is um, 
We work on police accountability. Today, one of my peers had a press conference to talk about um, introducing some new legislation around police accountability, which is really exciting. Uh, we have a mental health justice team that uh, won a huge victory in the last year around raising the personal needs allowance for people living in nursing homes. They hadn't had a raise in 30 years. Wow. $30 a month for 30 years is not enough money for people to sustain themselves. So when we see people outside of nursing homes asking for a dollar, we know why. Those people have an income and they shouldn't be outside looking for a dollar. They, they, so they were raised to $60 a month through that victory. Mm -hmm. um, we have an economic justice team that wants to see corporations pay their fair share. Two-thirds of corporations in Illinois pay no income tax. And so... Uh, You're doing a lot. You know, that reminds me of the things that um, One Northside and Streetwise have in common. One of the things we have in common is the area. We're both in the uptown. The uptown area and the stop is Wilson. You could uh, go to Streetwise or you can go to One North from Wilson. And we both are community oriented. You know, and not only that, but we both believe in people helping people. And not only that, but more importantly, we believe in people helping themselves, right? Absolutely. Okay, because streetwise is a hand up and not a hand out. You know, we believe in taking uh, panhandlers off the street and getting panhandlers to work for themselves, be self-supporting through their own contributions. Okay, and then One North Side, I believe their philosophy is the same way, you know, self-supporting through your own contributions, whereas... Uh, this is the time of the year to be self-supporting by going to the polls and voting, right? Absolutely. Okay, uh, can you tell me how one North Side engages people to turn themselves into voters? Yes, so uh, we register voters all year long. We give people training on how to vote and we actually walk people to the polls. So we organize meetings and we talk a little bit about um, how to go over a ballot, um, we make sure that people are informed about uh, who's running. Uh, we don't endorse anyone, but we, we can share stances, yes. as you guys have right. just talked about in the last segment. It's important that people vote for people that represent them, yes. that um, agree on their values. Yes. Um, and um, Yeah, we believe that our people have the answers for for their circumstances. And then, you know, one thing I can appreciate, you all extended your hand to come out to Streetwise and walk over to the uh, college to vote. You know, that was a great thing. Thank you for doing that. Thank you for engaging the people at Streetwise. And also, why is it so important to vote? We're finding every year that the elections are becoming closer and closer. They, the same constituents vote every single time and that the common people and poor people don't vote every time. And so when you have a segment of the community, sometimes wealthier, sometimes older, they have priorities and the rest of us will live with their priorities if we don't vote. And so we have to make sure our own priorities are up front. These elections are getting closer and narrower, so we try every to, vote counts. Every vote counts, and voting is very important because a lot of lives was given in order for some people to vote, right? Absolutely. And how does one North Side and its members engage with elected officials? So we are often in elected officials' offices um, asking do they agree with our values, asking can they work on things be on behalf of our community. Um, we're going to have a community meeting in May where we're going to invite all our elected officials to um, stand with us on our platforms. And so it's not just about voting, it's about engaging with our elected officials all year round and making sure that they're accountable to the people. They work for us. That's right. And then, you know, that that, that goes back to streetwise self-supporting through our own efforts. Whereas uh, <clears throat> a lot of times we don't have to go to the officials and plead and beg and ask them to do things when we can simply go to the polls, right? That's right. That's right. You know, having a relationship with our elected officials, why is that important? I think that the elected officials are looking at the polling numbers. They know what segments of our communities are voting, and those are the folks that they are um, more, um, they're more 
engage you know they're more engaged with you oh, know okay. if they're if they're finding out that the homeowners are the most are the populist vote are the most people that are voting then maybe renters aren't a concern so we want to make sure that everybody is voting everybody is being heard everybody is represented at the polling places and that um we are reminding our elected officials what our concerns are. And I, I really appreciate that about uh, One North Side because you all stand up for the little man. You are, you are a voice We are for, all the little man. Yeah, you are a voice for the minority too. Yes. Yeah, and I really appreciate that. And even the less fortunate, you know. But the thing is to get the education out for people to know. You know, that they do have rights and that they can exercise their right by going to the polls, right? That's absolutely right. Okay, why is holding elected officials accountable important? I think that uh, there are people like us. I think that um, we have to recognize that our power o over and with elected officials is that when we decide they're not doing their job, we get to choose someone else. Sometimes they have to be reminded of that. I think that... Um, a lot of our issues move when elected officials feel pressure from community folks. And so we, we believe in people power. People power. Yeah. That's right. That's what I want to say, people power. Okay. We can change things together. Mm -hmm. Together, right? Yes. Synergy. That's right. That's and so um, with a lot of votes, we change things. That's great. That's great. Now, uh, what are some of the top issues that one north side focuses on? So I mentioned a few of them earlier. I'm the education organizer, and right now we're focused on releasing a TIF surplus, which would allow um, basically a fund that's just existing to go to the public schools. We know the schools are desperately in need often, and so um, that's what I'm working on. Um, there's also, like I said, police accountability work that's moving pretty fast right now. Mental health justice, housing is housing. a big issue. Yeah. In Uptown, Rogers yes. Park, Lakeview, all of our neighborhoods. And so um, we believe that there's room for everybody. Um, affordable rent is a huge issue. And so we've recently joined a co coalition to um, um, keep rent affordable, you know, um, yes. Affordable housing. Affordable housing. That's important. Absolutely. Uh, you know, uh, <clears throat> I was thinking that uh, one north side um, has some things that's coming up in the future, such as? We have a big community meeting coming up May 6th. Um, we're going to be at the American Islamic Center for two hours okay. from 2.30 to 4 o'clock on May 6th. The address is 640 West Irving Park Road. We'll have child care and translation as well as a few buses leaving from Rogers Park and Uptown. So um, we hope that Streetwise will be a huge part of this meeting. We'll have our, our, our we'll celebrate our wins over the last year and a half. We'll also introduce some new platforms to work with work on in the future and we'll ask all of our elected officials for their support thank you so much you know one thing another thing that streetwise have in common with one north side and voting is there is room for all there's room for all that's right let me see if i can put that on there over here there's room for all we believe and in that streetwise as well. At one north side and at the polls, there's room for all. Absolutely. You know, so that's one thing we have in common. I really want to thank you for coming, and uh, <clears throat> thank you for sharing with us what one north side do, and you as a community organizer, what you do. And so we really appreciate you. All I all I want you to do is continue the good work. And um, if you're interested in Streetwise, you can also come to Streetwise uh, Tuesday or Thursday at 10, 10 o'clock. Tuesday or Thursday at 10 o'clock for orientation. We'll get you started with we'll get you started with 15 free papers. We'll give you an ID badge and a good location so we can get your wheels rolling so you can start making money so you can become self-supporting through your own efforts. That's right. There's room for all. There room for all. Room for all. Oh, and that was a great interview with Ebony. Yeah, Ebony. I loved was hearing great. about yes. uh, all the good work that we're doing with a partner up in Uptown. Um, so Ebony, thank you for joining us today. 
Uh, again, thank you to Suzanne, a regular feature here to talk about the informative piece on the Illinois gubernatorial primary. Don't forget to get out and vote on Tuesday. Um, and then next week, we have a fun edition or a fun segment. We'll be talking with Streetwise vendors who went and uh, watched Black Panther. Black Panther. And then had a group discussion about it and wrote about their perceptions and their experiences with it. So it was a fun field trip resulting in what is sure to be an amazing edition of the magazine. So that's it. That's Thanks it. for watching. Thank See you, you so much. See you next week. See you next week.